Oh, it's a good one, yes! About time. Good morning, welcome back to another one, or good afternoon, wherever, whatever time you're watching us. Good evening, good night. Back on Texas, or back on Canyon Lake in Texas. A little windy today, but actually today I wanted to talk about sonars. So if it's your first time watching, this is the Flop and Crabby channel. My name's Davis, apologize for the audio. I specifically wanted to talk about a question that's been coming up lately. Where am I in relation to my transducer showing up on my whatever unit you're using? Humminbird, Garmin, Lowrance, Raymarine. What is my transducer actually showing me and what direction am I going? Um, if you first, if you've never used a fish finder or any type of fishing sonar, this question actually comes up a lot. What am I actually seeing on the screen? So that's what I'm going to walk through today. Let's get the boat in the water. Canyon Lake, boat ramp number eight. Right now I'm showing you my Humminbird Helix 9 unit. Now the first thing to understand of how sonar system displays, I'm assuming this is the main screen you're probably looking at. Something uh, with the 2D or the traditional sonar unit. It's got a different color palette. Um, let's see if I can show the bottom here. There's the bottom. It's, this is a pretty deep lake. But the first thing you need to understand is where is your transducer mounted? Is it mounted at the bow on your trolling motor? In which case this unit that I'm showing you right now is actually mounted on the stern just on this side of my my large motor and that's that's important to know because it it determines whether you're seeing the fish before you get to it in which case if you're sitting at your council and you have your trolling motor in the water that trolling motor is going to pick up the fish before it actually passes underneath where you're sitting you could also, if you if you have a kayak, you could also mount it on the side of the kayak. Um, this is just really important to understand where your signal is being sent from um, to know if the fish is directly below you, if it's behind you by the time you see it displayed on your screen. Uh, this is the 2D or traditional sonar system. Uh, this is the display. All units have this. And what's, I guess what's cool about it is you can adjust it to fit what you're really looking for. Um, you can turn the sensitivity up if you're looking for smaller fish, panfish, uh, crappie, bluegill. Um, you can turn the sensitivity down to, to determine if you're going for bigger fish, walleye, bass, uh, pike, muskie, stuff like that, catfish. So this hummingbird, like most sonar systems, have two different uh, frequencies or cone angles. Um, this hummingbird has an 83 and a 200. So here's my, I always, I usually run it on 200 kilohertz, but there's 83 kilohertz and 200 kilohertz. Now your 83 is your wide angle cone, okay? Uh, this is, I think it's about a 20 degree cone. And your 200 is your narrow angle, which is about nine degrees. Now, a cool little tip for you, when you're running 200 kilohertz or that narrow cone angle, you can take one third of your total depth. So in this case, I'm at 33 feet. One third of that is 11 feet. That is how far across my cone is reading on the lake surface or on the lake bottom excuse me and when you're running the 83 kilohertz it's a one-to-one -one ratio so when you're running that 83 kilohertz it's a one-to-one -one ratio uh, which means if it's 33 feet of water my my cone is reading 33 feet across on the lake bottom okay now and if you notice it went from 283 it's a little more pixelated because it's trying to cram more information in your display unit. Um, that's just a cool little tip for you. But the question that I got in the comment section is where am I in relation to what's showing up on the screen? So my transducer is mounted at the transom. Here's my boat, we're gonna go to this. So here's my boat as it's going this way. This is where my transducer is mounted, right on this corner. So this is called the amplitude meter or the real-time sonar, according to Humminbird. And anything directly underneath my boat, it's gonna show up right there and everything that moves from right to left is historical data so if i go to this screen i can actually use my toggle switch and it'll show me how far back behind my boat that is see that foot mark not all units can do that um, some of the smaller ones the the ones that are about a hundred dollars might not be able to do something like that but most of them 
can tell you exactly how far back something is, whether it's trees, whether it's fish, uh, behind your boat. So I, before I move on to the down imaging and the side imaging screens, I really want to uh, talk about the actual cone angle and what it looks like from the transducer. Now this is mounted on the right side, or my starboard side of my boat, at the stern. And if I'm in 33, we'll call this 33 feet of water, that's showing 11 feet across on the lake bottom. But as I move up the water column, let's say I'm only 10 feet down, that's only showing three feet across, three feet of water from where my transma is mounted. So if you only have a 2D or a traditional sonar unit display, preferably if you have GPS, your boat is only gonna cover three feet at 10 feet deep running 200 kilohertz. So here's what I recommend. If you're fishing 10 feet or shallower, run 83 kilohertz because what's gonna happen is instead of the unit trying to cram all that data when you're running 83 kilohertz or that wide cone angle at 33 feet deep, if you're running 10 feet or shallower, it doesn't have all that data to try to cram into the display and it will show up less pixelated like the 200 kilohertz or that narrow cone angle as it shows up when it's in deeper water here. I'm gonna hit a rock, one second. So here's my general rule about running different frequencies or cone angles. If it's less than 10 feet of water, I'd recommend 83 kilohertz. It's the wide cone angle. It's shallow enough that it, the data that this unit is trying to bring in, it's not gonna get crammed in and pixelated on the, this type of unit. See right now I have it at 83 and it looks really pixelated. It looks like there's big, big specs there. But if I turn it to 200, see how that showed up? It's a lot cleaner of a look. Um, and obviously smaller fish will show up on that narrow cone angle when you're fishing deeper water. So shallower than 10 feet, 83 kilohertz. From 10 feet to 40 feet, run 200 kilohertz. From 40 feet or deeper, run 83. And it's not because you're trying to fit things into the screen, you're not trying to fit all that data. The lower the frequency, the more it will penetrate into the water column. The faster the frequency or the higher the frequency, the less it'll penetrate. So that's why deeper than 40 feet, if you're, for whatever reason, you're fishing deeper than 40 feet, I'd recommend using 83 kilohertz uh, because 200 kilohertz might not send the signal down deep enough to actually pick up any fish or structure on the lake bottom. Um, it has nothing to do with actually cramming in data. It has everything to do with frequency and the wavelength needs to get down to where you want to fish or want to see the fish. So I recommend running 83 kilohertz. Um, that's the last little thing on where you are for the 2D or the traditional sonar display. So let's go over to the down imaging. Pretty much the same as your 2D or traditional sonar display, um, except it's running a different frequency. You run at 455, which is what this is. You can run an 800, or if your unit is a mega imaging, um, something in the megahertz. Most newer units, obviously it'll say mega imaging, that's the brand name now or mega or hyper imaging or something, something to that effect. So this is 455 kilohertz. This is my widest cone angle. But the cool thing about down imaging on almost all units, if you go to, so on this unit, it might be different for your units. If you go to the menu screen, hit it twice, I'm gonna go to my sonar. I'm gonna scroll all the way down to where it says zoom width. Now on down imaging or down scan, down view, whatever unit you have, you can select not only the frequency, which is 455, which is what I'm using, it's the widest angle. You can also select which type of angle within that frequency you want. So I can select from narrow to mid, or this is medium, mid, to wide. Um, so within that 455 frequency, you can actually select kind of which cone angle uh, you want. This has three of them. And then if I go to my 800 kilohertz, which is this one, I can do the same exact thing. Now 800 is gonna be a, a narrower uh, cone angle. I'm gonna see less of the lake bottom, but it's gonna give me more detail. Now, if I, let's go back to 455. I'm not a huge fan of running 800. But right here, if we go to my GPS, so I'm not moving very much, but my boat is moving this way. This is where my transducer is, right at the top where the zero is and everything straight below it, that's immediately right underneath my boat. Everything moving from right to left is that historical data. 
and again you can toggle over and it'll show you exactly how far behind that boat the fish or the structure whatever you're trying to find so that's 17 feet that mark right there so the last display is the side imaging display um, I'm gonna actually do a, a more in-depth video because this one it's it, there's a little more detail to it uh, of how to read it left to right that's actually gonna be coming up next in my Texas part of the Texas series here's my boat port starboard side you see the red and the, the green everything starting right at the top of my screen is directly below my transducer everything to the right and the left at the very top of the screen is not only is not just directly below the boat but also to the right or to the left anything that goes from top to bottom that's historical data and again you can toggle over to see this looks like some sort of brush okay that is 18 feet behind me so the last thing I wanted to talk about to answer the question of where I am relative to where my transducer is and I get this question a lot I'll probably have to do a full-on video on it but marking a waypoint uh, these are trees coming up and going back to that waypoint so this is a big big tree or oh no that's a that's the creek bottom going up to the shelf here so there's a tree on top of it so let's go toggle over to this I'm gonna mark this as a, a waypoint I'm gonna hit mark that shouldn't come up for you this is an older unit um, so I think I have one too many waypoints saved but there's my waypoint so now I'm gonna go back to it now you can see the boat is heading straight away from it so I'm gonna spin around whoops it's really hard to steer with a camera between you and the steering wheel see if we can get right back over the top of it. Now I will say this, if you have an external uh, GPS puck, most units come with, you can buy one for most units, um, that is probably more accurate than just the internal. And this unit is a first generation Helix, so the second and third generations are definitely more accurate when it comes to GPS. Oh, we're driving all over the place. So I'm just gonna see my green line coming into my boat. I'm just gonna point it, my boat bow right at that GPS mark. It's a little difficult sometimes. But if you zoom in far enough, you can eventually figure it out. And there's that shelf that I had. And my tree should be somewhere right here. Well, see this is the problem with first generation. Sometimes the waypoint, it might be four feet or five feet to one side or the other, uh, but second and third generations are much more accurate when it comes to waypoint GPS, but that's that shelf. I'm gonna guess that tree is on one side or the other of that, that drop off. Let's spin back around and see if we can find it. But if you, you can buy an external puck uh, GPS, not only for Humminbird, Lowrance, Garmin, they all have them. Uh, gives you a little more accurate of a reading than just the internal GPS. Trees, 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 there's the shelf, and I think that's the tree right there. Yeah, that's that tree coming up. That's the one side of that tree. Here's the shelf coming through here, and then it drops back off. That's the one side of the tree. So that's gonna wrap it up. Oh, let's see this. Shut that off. So that's gonna wrap it up for me to answer the question of where your display unit is showing relative to where your transducer is. Transducer's in the top right corner on the 2D and the down imaging. On the side imaging, it is on the very top middle. So hopefully that answered the question for a lot of you. I know there's a lot of new viewers that have watched my sonar videos. Um, so first of all, I appreciate you watching, thank you. And uh, be sure if you got any questions, no matter how simple or silly they, you think they are, post them in the comment section below because if you have the question about how to use these units, somebody else probably does too. If you need something, if you need an answer right away, you can do three things. You can send me an email. There's a business email down below or probably a faster way of getting a hold of me. You can follow me on Facebook, follow me on Instagram and message me on one of those sites. So appreciate you watching. If you like these sonar videos, I'll link a playlist to a bunch more of them in the video description. Be sure to click that subscribe button. Be sure to click that bell. That bell will notify you every time I post a new video. So thanks for watching. We'll see you.